we human beings and the surrounding environment occur in a close association to one another now this surrounding environment includes the other living creatures which is the biotic component and the non-living things as well the stones the pebbles the sand and all those are in close association with us so it is a human responsibility it is a moral and ethical responsibility for us to maintain this environment in its sanctity therefore we understand the concept of environmental ethics now whenever we talk about food chain we understood the hierarchies that exist so if any one of the organisms is removed from that hierarchy definitely the whole of the food chain gets disrupted and that is the basis to understand this environmental ethics now there were two important studies that have been quoted here one is the racial carson's study on the silent spring this work of silent spring talks about the extreme use of chemical pesticides and because of those use of chemical pesticides we have seen that there has been significant deterioration in the environmental conditions the next interesting study is paul elrich's study and that is in the name of the population bomb and that explains how the ever increasing population has brought a curb to the natural resources and it could be a kind of devastation for the natural resources so these two studies basically promote us motivate us to understand what is ethically correct what is morally correct when we are taking any judgment that affects the environment or the surrounding creatures now there have been three interesting approaches to study this now these approaches are anthropocentrism biocentrism and ecocentrism so when i say anthropocentrism we are talking about a approach where we are focusing on an environment derived from human interest alone so what we want our surroundings to be like we would make the surrounding similar to that and this is very very true when you have an example of your home so how you want to be uh, or how you want to create your home depends solely on you and the same goes with this planet earth so this is the anthropocentrism view anthropocentric means human based approach so it's based on our interests alone biocentric approach says that each of the organisms that we can see around us have their right to coexist so each of the organism have their interesting rights to coexist and none of these rights should be uh suppressed and therefore biocentrism approach is important the third important approach is ecocentrism ecocentrism maintains an environment which deserves a moral consideration now this moral consideration focuses on understanding organisms their lives and understanding that their lives goes along with our lives so maintaining a proper balance between the two life structure is what is very very important when we talk about the ecocentrism so anthropocentrism i repeat again it's a human induced approach where we focus based on our interest biocentrism where we focus that each organism has a li li right to live a worthy life and ecocentrism focuses on an approach where environment deserves a moral consideration and it involves the approach of both the living organisms uh, the human beings and the other living organisms now there was an interesting concept which was named under radical ecology now radical radical means a new way a totally changing way of life and that new way of thought is a fundamental change in human understanding and this fundamental change in human understanding brought about three streams under environmental ethics that are very very important these are social ecology eco feminism and deep ecology so let's understand these one by one deep ecology is a feeling or a sense when we are trying to understand that all living organisms have a integral part in protecting the planet 
so if we are part of this earth we consider ourselves to be part of this earth we understand that we have a very very important role to protect the environment to protect the surroundings and this deep ecology concept you have a famous case study of sherpas how they used to uh, worship the himalayan mountains and they do not uh, allow they were not allowed to extract any plants of or any medicinal value of the plants that could be seen in the himalayan specific uh, mountains they used to worship it to that extent and that is deep ecology it is a feeling imbibed deep within yourself so we have covered deep ecology in a separate lecture coming on to eco feminism now eco feminism talks about a crucial connection that exists between the exploitation of women and the domination of the nature so you had a french writer Ella Bon who basically in her works try to explain how there is a deep connection that exists between the two and it is the domination of the natural world that becomes very important the next is social ecology social ecology shares the foundation of environmental crisis in the dominant ideologies that exist so bookchin was one of the major propounders of this theory and social ecology tries to explain that social problems are basically a connection of uh, mutually dependent thoughts that nature and human beings have so there is a mutual dependence that is seen between nature and human beings and that is social ecology so those are the three important approaches under the concept of environmental ethics in radical ecology so radical ecology becomes a very very prime focus and an important concept to understand under environmental ethics a quick crux of what we have understood is the idea is we as a human being have a moral and a social responsibility a ethical responsibility to protect the surrounding to protect the creatures the biotic as well as the abiotic components around us and that was about environmental ethics we would be covering many many interesting lectures for you stay tuned have a wonderful day